Okay, I want to welcome everyone to another episode of RG22 Outdoor Adventures. And, you know, in this video, there's something I've always wanted to do and what we're going to do in this one. That is to catch, that is to use one lure and one rod to catch a fish or many fish. As you saw in the last video, I made this lure and at the very end, you saw a picture of the muskie that it caught. So the challenge, challenge, I should say challenge. So lunge is in the end and muscle lunge, challenge. So we're gonna do a challenge with one rod one and one lure for the entire day. So let's get started. Sit back, relax, grab a drink, grab a bowl of popcorn, uh, sit back and Join in and watch me build this lure. I'm going to explain things on this internal weighting that I did and how I did it. So when it's all done, we're going to get out on the water and we're going to do a lot of fishing and we're going to see if we can't get, can't get a muskie on the bait for the entire day. Okay, so sit back, relax, and let's build a lure. Okay, so this is the lure we're gonna I'm gonna use for that for my one lure challenge. This is the blank. Now you guys have already seen the lure made, so I don't think I really need to dive into how I did it. Um, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna concentrate on the through wire and um, actually routing out the lead holes, and so you guys can actually see in probably a little bit greater detail how I did the. Um, the lead holes, the internal weighting system that I have on this. Okay, so now that I've got the center marked, we're going to make some lines here where I'm going to try to sand down to. So some chamfer lines that I'm going to use sandpaper to get down to. And um, yeah, so let's get started on that. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do, we're going to sand from here to here, and then from there to there. Okay, so I don't remember if you guys had meant, had hear me say the first time I cut this, this was the most nerve-wracking part of the entire build. And for me it still is. Uh, reason being is because, well, you got to have your center from, you got to have your center accurately marked. And you have to know where you're cutting. And also you have to have a very steady hand with the blade. So let's start cutting this. Let's get our center, there's our center about there. So we're gonna turn this on and we're gonna start cutting this in half. So let's do it. Wow, that was nerve-wracking, let me tell you. But, okay, so there's our two halves. Okay, so now the next step is to actually start drumming. Now, see, we kind of messed up here. We weren't really straight. So our lead holes are going to be a little bit different here. Um, this side may need a little bit more than this side, or vice versa. So, okay. Just bring this down a little bit. Okay, so right here. Okay, so now, as you, if you remember correctly, I think these lures were seven and a half inches, or seven, one of the two. Let's see which one they were, seven or seven and a half. I think they were seven and a half. Yeah. Okay, so remember we divided by three and we got like two and a half inches. So we're going to go from the front to from the nose of the lure where we're going to put our um, toe point to two and a half inches. That's our first hook, hook hanger. And then we're going to measure another two and a half inches. And that's going to be our middle hook hanger. And then obviously two and a half inches back from that is going to be our back hook hanger. 
So our toe points are going to be right in the middle. Okay, right about there. And then what I want, I want my through wire channel to go right through the middle of the eye. And I want to follow the contour of the lure all the way down to the middle like that. This is going to be one part of the channel there. Obviously here. Well, so this is the, the bit I'm going to use here. If you guys can see that. So this bit I'm going to use to um, route out the wire channel and then we'll get our lead weight holes. We'll get all those measured out and, and then we'll figure out how we want to do that. Okay, so let's get started. I did a lot of routing for the through wire channel. I did some. Of, I did that off cam, most of it off camera, and I also measured um, the areas for my through wire. The idea is for this lure to kind of sit like this in the water, just like that, nice and level. And then as I as we crank it in, it's going to dive. It's going to have a nice little wiggle and maybe a. A wobble to it and when I stop it's gonna suspend and that's gonna slowly rise up to the top so the challenge is gonna be getting the weight just right the same amount of lead on both sides having both sides equal in weight and doing that so that way we can get this nice this lure to level up nicely and to swim nicely and be extremely stable in the water. Okay, so what I did was I measured from the edge of the lure an eighth inch and I measured that all the way down the lure and then I took all those dots and I connected them. Okay, this Dremel tool, which is what we're going to use to route all that out, is roughly two eighths or a quarter inch. So I measured again a quarter inch up. Okay, and I marked dots all the way down the sides, all the way across the top. I'm sorry, all the way across the top. And then again, you connect the dots. What I did then, well, this is all arbitrary numbers. I, um, this is all trial and error. So I'm sure the numbers aren't going to be exact, but went roughly one and a half to one and a quarter, three quarters inches here, starting from the middle. And this is two and a, two and a half inches from here to here. So this is roughly the middle. So I measured another half a um, quarter inch and a quarter inch to get our half inch. And I did the same thing over here, but I moved it closer to the hook hanger. Okay, so once all that's done, we obviously link everything together. And now we're gonna start routing. Okay, so now we're gonna start routing this. So the routing is the same thing as we did here, but we have to go deeper. And again, you just wanna take your time there's no need to rush this, so take your time.
Okay. Well, let's check our depth. I'd say we were right about there, maybe a little bit more, but I want to be very careful of where I'm going. Because I do not want to go through the lure. But I think we have a little bit more, a little, we can go a little bit more. And there we go. And remember, we also have this through wire channel here we have to deal with too. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, so there we go. So let's show you, let's show, let's show you guys what this is gonna look like with the through wire bent. So there we go. And now we're gonna put this on here. And that's what it's gonna look like. There. And then I also cut the diving lip out um, off camera. You guys have seen that done enough times. I don't need to, I don't think I need to show anyone how to do that. But we'll get it mocked up. And there we go. There's what the uh, lure is going to look like, just like that. So I think this is going to dive pretty deep. I may make a smaller lip. I don't know yet, but I like this one. I like how it's going. I like how it's going to turn out. It's not sanded completely, so it's not straight. But there we go. There's what the lure is going to look like, all mocked up. Okay. Well. Okay. So here. Um, I've got all the lead holes, all the slots all drummeled out, the through wire channel. I've got the through wire done. And what I'm going to do now is actually, you know, what? I was kind of thinking maybe I want this wire to come out straighter a little bit, kind of like that. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the Dremel and I'm going to carve some of this out over here. So this comes out a little bit straighter and do the same thing over here. And then we're going to get everything epoxied and clamped. Okay, so now we're going to brush the epoxy on. I should be doing this over a piece of paper or something, but oh well, we'll hold it. Starting to solidify, so we got to work a little faster. Let's get this over to the clamp and get it clamped down. In five minutes, hopefully, this will all be set and ready to go. Okay, so here's the lure. Um, we did all the routing and everything, got it all done. I put the epoxy in. We got to clamp down. I'm gonna let the epoxy set. I just used five minute epoxy. Um, we're gonna let that epoxy set. And then when I come home from work tonight is when the fun's gonna start because we're gonna do all of our finished sanding. We're gonna seal it. And hopefully we can get it painted. And that way, Come Wednesday or Tuesday, we're going to do the finish on it tomorrow. And then hopefully Wednesday, when we get out on the boat, we do our one rod, one lure challenge to see if we can't catch a muskie on this lure. And that's all we're going to use. Okay, so we'll see you later. And I am off to work. You guys have a great day. Okay, so what I have done is, um, uh, let's see what I do. Okay, so what I did was I actually glued it all together.
did all the finished sanding, cut the diving lip out, um, and got it all epoxied and everything like that. So now it's nice and smooth and ready for paint. So let's start painting. We're going to do opaque white first. And let's get this dried off. So here's the first color we're going to use. And again, that's going to go across the entire, it's going to cover the entire uh, lure. And I thinned it out a little bit in here. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, there you guys can see the pearl. That's cool. use a different angle. All right, let's get this dried off and then we'll put another coat on. This is our pearl white. Okay, so now I gotta decide on the next color. I think what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna get started on the scales. Actually, no, I think maybe we'll do some stippling first. Because I have a brush that we're gonna do that with. And we're gonna use some, like maybe some gray and some black colors. So let's do that. And we'll do that along, we'll take this brush and we'll just put some paint along the top here like this and then we'll do the scales and then we'll do the top and then I'm going to do orange down here and that should be it and do our gills and everything like we normally do on all the lures okay so let's do that all right let's get started first we're going to do black Okay, so basically what I want to do is I just want to do, hopefully we don't mess this up. If we met the, mess this up, I got to do it all over again. Well, I feel like Bob Ross right now. I'm not making mistakes, just having happy little accidents. I think this can be a really cool effect on this. We're obviously going to come down here like this. Let's take, let's just hold this. Ah, rats. Right, there we go. A little bit more. And we're going to come down here. Just like that. I think that looks pretty cool. I like it. I kind of like that. Now, what do you guys think? I like that. And now what I want to do is I want to mix a little bit of this black. Now I'm really feeling like Bob Ross. Let's put some black and some white. Some more white. Some more pearl white. Let's go with a little bit of opaque white. Put a little bit of drop of opaque white. Mix that in there. Uh, too much. I 
No, actually, that looks pretty good. We'll mix in some grays. We're going to call that at this point um, we're going to be working on the scales again i'm going to do a pearl white i'm going to do this down the sides here and then i'm going to take a silver and i'm just going to go across right right, right around here with a silver and then maybe some black and then some i've got this new color that i've never used before um so we're going to try it out on this lure it's uh called illustration sepia we're going to try that too on this so let's get started on the on the flanks here that we're going to do pearl white. Okay, we're going to do another coat. The nice thing is I'm thinking that reducing this and what's neat is one that's like this, you're gonna, it's gonna, the black's not gonna show through, but then depending upon the angle, you're still gonna have that color of the body showing through, which is really neat. the top and just down these flanks over here and I actually mixed it myself so So far, I think this looks pretty neat. I'm kind of liking it. Make sure I'm liking it quite a bit. So I think what I want to do next is I want to um, add, I want to put some black at the ends of the scales here. I think that might work. I think that might look pretty good, at least across here. And what that's going to require is it's going to require me pointing the airbrush this way and spraying across very lightly. So I don't want it to I don't want it to like look really heavy. I want it to be fairly light. Um, and then I'm going to go back over with the stippling brush again, and then we'll go over the back with some sepia and blend it all together. So let's put some more scales on this. Okay, so what I decided to, all right. Okay, so I decided to use some uh, Wicked Jet Black and I'm gonna just go across and I want that black to kind of end up at this part of the scales. So we're gonna start the airbrush here. I wanna do very light because I don't really want it to be very defined. I just want it to kind of just show that there's something there. Okay, so let's do this. There, just like that. That's all I want. There. I mean, that ties it nicely. So you can see there's some black that's pulling up there. So it looks a little, look, you know, it kind of looks a little bit more realistic. I think this is going to give a really cool effect with the um, scales on this too. Okay. 
Okay, so let's unveil these scales. Let's see how this is going to look. I'm kind of already liking what I'm seeing. I hope you guys are too. Drum roll. Look at that. I really like that. Okay, so I said I'm going to paint the top of the lure, and what I'm going to try, I bought this Illustration Sepia. Now the bottle says, let's see here, made with light fast pigments and a durable resin, features delayed coloring, uh, curing, I'm sorry, features delayed curing, which during the first 24 hours, colors erase softly. Uh, I'm not going to be doing any erasing with it, but, um, or shading. But we're just going to spray it lightly, so I don't know how this is going to work. So this is all brand new to me. I've never used this stuff before. And heck, I'm even still learning about using the regular Createx colors. Or regular airbrush paint, for that matter. Okay, so let's try this. And let's put this down the back, and we'll let it dry. And um, I'm going to call the body pretty much done after that, after I do my uh, fluorescent orange. So let's try this. So I'm going really light. I just want to tie this all together here. So it's just going to be right across the top here, okay? There we go. There. That looks really good. I like that. Okay. Man, I wish you guys could see this in, in like, not on camera. I gotta figure out how, how to show you guys this. This just looks awesome. Here we go. Look at that. That is just amazing. That translucent, that like, it's like transparent. The scales show through. This just looks so realistic. It really does. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna do the gills. And I'm just going to define the gills right here with just with a really nice light spritz of white. There we go. That looks pretty good. I like that. Okay, so let's do the other side. Okay. Okay, so there's our gills. There we go. Okay. Now, we had to trust the process before. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna trust the process. And we're gonna go on the inside. Put a little bit of red on there. We're going to come halfway up, just like that. Okay, so there we go. We're trusting the process. So now, I'm okay, let's get, let's start working on this head. It's very light with the pearl.
Okay, there we go. We're going to call that part done and completed. Next is, um, darn crane flies, jeez. Okay, so now I've got this head, I've got the head pretty much almost done. So now it's time to add these colors over here and try to blend all this in and then we'll put a little bit of black here to define our gill a little bit more and um, paint some sepia here and I will call it done. So let's, um, let's kind of try to duplicate this without the scales over here. Okay, let's continue on with our with our um, with our lure painting this head. So now I'm using a gray color right here. It's a wicked jet black and a pearl white that I mixed together to come up with a more of a silver type color. And then we're just going to kind of spray this all up in here, just kind of. There we go. See that? That's looking pretty darn good. Now I'm going to take the black that I have on this palette, so this Wicked Jet Black, and then like I did all this here with the brush, we're going to do the same thing on the head. Okay, now we're going to use that, uh, what is it, the sepia illustration paint from Createx. And that's just going to go on the, I'm going to first paint the top of the head, and then I'm going to go down in here. And then we're going to go straight down the back too. There we go. And then we're just going to come across here. Sorry. There. And then I want to come over here. Excellent. I like that. And we're going to come across here really light. There. Right about here. There. And here. Just like that. Excellent. I like that. Okay. Next is Wicked, Wicked Jet Black. And that's going to define our gill. And we're going to, and then we're going to call that done. And then we're going to work on the eyes. Shoot, did I get a fingerprint in there? No, good. Okay. There we go. There's our gill. I really like how I do this now. I think I've really got these gills down. I think next is time to really start pushing my limits and start doing some fins again. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to call the head complete. 
the head is finished. There's some red accents in the gills. And I'm going to get this signed. So all I need is some black paint to make like a type of ink. And then um, we'll get started on the eyes. I'm very pleased with this lawyer right now. So we're going to sign it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my final coat of clear. Obviously, we're using a two-part epoxy, so let's get that mixed together. So, quick coat epoxy, part A and part B. It's a one-to-one -one mix. I usually do it in grams. And we'll probably do like, I don't know, 10 or 15. There's 10, 10 of part A. We'll zero it out. And then we'll do 10 of part B. Oops, I guess we'll do 12. It'll mix, it'll harden faster. That's okay. Okay, we're gonna mix it and then we'll be back. Okay, so time to put the finish on. This is the final coat and then we're gonna call this lure complete and then we'll use it tomorrow. In reality we shouldn't, but in, um, in the spirit of the video, we're gonna. Okay, here goes our finish. Sorry again. So there's our lure right there. All right, let's put it on this one. And now we just let it rotate and that's it. Okay, so let's um, let's see if we can get a lure in action. Some action shots of this lure. The challenge was a bust. The lure doesn't, I don't think the lure really runs all that well. Um, I don't know if it has something to do with how the diving lip was put in. I'm assuming that's what the problem was. Um, because the, the two halves weighed the same and I think everything was pretty much symmetrical there. And I think it was just the diving lip was a little bit off. But I don't know if you guys can see. There's a lure. 
It's just when we go really fast, it wants to blow out. It needs some heavy duty tuning. So let's do some casts. We'll do it, we'll fish it as a twitch bait and see if we can't get a muskie to hit. Nice accurate cast. It just suspends. Here we are on the figure eight. Doesn't really nice. Look at that bomb. Wow. We'll just let it pause. If there's something there and he's falling, maybe he'll strike. See how it blew out? I mean, I love the paint job on this lure. But I'm not too happy with the action. So I think we're gonna I'm gonna try to find another way to uh, get the diving lip secured in. My theory is the lex hand's a little too thin. And it doesn't fit tight enough, and with the epoxy, it just has a tendency to the epoxy when it's wet, when it hasn't fully cured and set, kind of act as a lubricant that just kind of slides out of the um, diving lip slot which is cut straight because I'm using a bit, uh, table saw. My goal is to have these lures troll at, without blowing out at six miles an hour. That's my goal. If you're really nice and slow, nice slow steady retrieve, it works awesome. It's when you're going fast. You just, this retrieve here, it works perfect. We'll make one pass with this lure and then we'll make another pass with another lure. Since the challenge is done. There we go, we're starting to get into some weeds. I think we have weeds.
Yep. So a great way to tell when these lures aren't running good is when they catch weeds. So my last video when I made that lure, this lure, um, the fish was caught on the last cast of the day. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna use this as a last lure, last spot, one of the last casts for the day. This lure will rise to the top very slowly. <laughs> 